So the opponent, she spends much time um, giving a unique, unique experience about a testimony of some historian that <coughs> has apparently went through the system of a single sex uh, educational system and I don't think that's the, uh, I mean, as uh, having a unique testimony for one person is not going to be a very convincing debate. And the opponent also speaks about how gender stereotypes will be broken. And I actually found numerous occasion, um, evidences that go against that. <coughs> um, actually, in California, there was 12 experimental single-sex schools um, during 1998 through 2000, and they all closed down due to um, well, lack of interest and just it, it just didn't work the way it was intended to. Um, in, in these 12 schools, the creation of separate academies for boys and girls on the same campus led to a dichotomous understanding of gender in which girls were seen as good and boys were seen as bad. Also, in this uh, in, this, in these uh, 12 schools, traditional gender stereotypes were often reinforced in single-sex academies. Um, boys tended to be taught more regimented, traditional, and individualistic back in the individualistic fashion, and girls more in a nurturing and cooperative and open environment. And also in terms of uh, in terms of uh, stereotyping people within the, I mean, the students. Um, even within um, single sex schools, it's, it's been shown by, um, in the research by the American Association of University of Women, University of Women, that even in single sex schools, um, the reproduction of gender roles and cultural norms of masculine and feminine behavior can occur in a single, in a single sex as well as mixed sex environment. So basically what it's saying is that even if they're all boys, um, certain boys, maybe probably the weaker ones or like the more feminine looking ones will be called sissies, or like maybe like the tougher girls will be, you know. So basically what it's saying is that even within a single sex environment, stereotypical um, gender roles can occur. Um, and also within a same sex educational system, there's a high, uh, there was, um, there is a high tolerance to sexism and sexual stereotypes. For example, um, the study done by Younger M and Warrington M, with the, they're both um, educational researchers. Um, they found that students argue that many boys resent boy-only classes and complain about loss of girl support for their learning, learning and behavior. Um, they also have the potential to reward macho behavior on the part of both boys and male teachers to allow more extreme and sexist language to pass unchallenged and to give new opportunities for old-style masculinity and reinforce sexual stereotypes. So basically, what it's saying is, in a room full of all guys or all girls, um, sexism is a lot more accepted, and which shouldn't be because out of, out of campus, you know, it's not the same kind of um, environment or the uh, demographics. Um, the opponent also talks about how scores will improve if we were to change the public educational system into a single single sex education, and that too, there was um, numerous occasions of uh, evidences that showed the opposite. Um, for example, um, here um, are Farley and Crawford, who are educational researchers, in a study in 1985. Um, in Ontario noted that the achievement gains were not so much evident with respect to actual marks and test scores, despite students' perception of higher performance. So the students thought that they were doing better and learning more in school, but in actuality, their scores were um, staying the same.
Um, and actually, single education, um, single sex education has been seen to um, slightly help girls, but they, they fail to mention that sometimes it does hurt the boys. Um, in a study done by Bradley Catherine, she finds that um, that male-only environment had a negative impact on the achievement of males. So basically what it's saying is that if we were to change to a single-sex education, um, even though it would help the girls, it would probably harm the boys in terms of scores. And so that in itself would be, um, I mean, it would be unfair to give that advantage to, I mean, not give that advantage to girls, but at the same time, if you give that advantage to girls, then it will be just as unfair to take it away from the boys at the same time. That makes sense. Alright. Um, um, also, there was a study done by Robinson, um, Robinson and Smithers in 1999 about on a school that was actually a single sex educational system that changed into a co-educational co system. And what they did was they basically studied the process of them going from one system to another, and they found that in, um, in a two-year study, um, a single-sex school becoming co-educational found from a range of measures, found that, um, that the social benef benefits getting, um, coming from co-education were not at the expense of academic achievement for either girls or boys. Um, Um, also, they also talk about um, boys being distractions to girls, but um, by uh, a study done by Robinson, P. and Smithers in 1999, they asked survey girls that were in um, in uh, grade school, and they asked the girls if the boys bothering them like made a big difference. But um, the girls, most of them, um, there were comments about boys being a distraction, but many felt that it was good to grow up together and get to know each other. And I think that's very important. I mean, coming up through um, a single sex education, you're limited to, you know, having mostly friends in one gender. And I think that's really limiting in just the sense of public education. Thank you.